Alright, it's been a while since my last video. Um, I finally got the battery cells in. Uh, they ended up being delayed due to the US Thanksgiving holidays. So uh, here's one of the cells. I got uh, 26 of them is how many I ordered. And so just for reference here you can see it's about um, uh, two and a bit inches wide by uh, about four inches on that direction and about uh, seven inches or so tall. So uh, these cells basically um, have, uh, you know, the usual two terminals and here's the vent cap in the, right in the middle here. So they recommend that you use these things upright because if you, um, you know, obviously you mount them upside down, there's a chance that any loose electrolyte in there could leak out of the vent cap. Um, I have heard some people saying that uh, mounting them in this orientation is okay um, because the uh, the plates are uh, are are routed this way, so they're all still um, equally covered with any loose electrolyte that's in there. But I've also heard people say to not mount them this way um, because uh, if the plates are mounted flat like this then you could see how the electrolyte would run down um, to this side of the cell and then the top side of the cell would have would not have any electrolyte. Um, I might try to explain this a little better with a picture uh, a little bit a little bit further on in this video so just uh, stay tuned and hopefully I'll try to explain that a little bit better uh, coming up here. Um, yeah and another handy thing that they send you when you order these batteries is they send you a spe uh, sheet with um, the spec of all the cells on it so they tell you the um, the internal resistance of each cell, uh, the nominal voltage that it was shipped as, and the um, capacity. And I did go ahead and I measured all of them, all the cells I got with um, my Fluke, and they're all pretty much exactly 3.300. So uh, yeah, I'm sure the voltage came down a little bit since they came from the factory. It's probably been quite a while. So, but they were all exactly the same. So they're definitely in. Um, in good shape. And um, these cells are spec'd out as 70 amp hour cells, but as you can see, pretty much every single one is at least 75 amp hours. So, yeah, they uh, they under spec them a little bit, but that's kind of, you know, it's just a nominal rating, so that's uh, really good. And for some reason on this sheet here, I got uh, 28 cells, but there's only 26 uh, that I received, so I'm thinking that two of these were not included. I'm thinking there's one up here that shows up as uh, 0.47 for internal resistance, and there's another one here for 0.47. So maybe they excluded those two. There is um, one here with a weird serial number and one here with a different... Well, I guess that one has a different size serial number as well. So I'm not sure. I haven't gone through these yet and checked which ones, which of these cells I actually have, but yeah, there's two on the sheet that are um, on the sheet, but I don't actually have, so they weren't included for some reason. So, okay, so I'm just gonna try to explain a little better what I was talking about there. So, just imagine these two sheets being plates of the cell. Um, right now, they would be oriented like this. So, this way, um, these two sheets, uh, all the electrolyte, if it ran all the way to the bottom, then you'd still have, uh, you know, the e an equal amount of electrolyte distributed among the plates. Um, but it, so if you're, and if you were to tilt them uh, this way, like this, with the cell on its side, like that, so the plates are now like this, um, you're still going to have equal distribution of the electrolyte all over the plates because um, just, just the orientation and just, just the orientation. Um, but if you were to lay it flat like this, then over time, gravity is going to pull the electrolyte from the top here down to the bottom. So you're going to end up with more electrolyte on the bottom sheet than you would on the top sheet and that's going to cause problems with the cell. So that could cause uh, internal resistance problems, uh, capacity problems as well. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, one thing about these cells as well is that since the case is plastic and it's not uh, incredibly strong, the cell can actually bulge. So you can kind of imagine if the plates are like this again, and you charge up the cell, um, 
what can happen is the plates can separate a little bit and that can cause the cell to bulge uh, this way this way so um, what you really have to do when you install these batteries is you have to somehow restrict uh, the movement of these large flat faces uh, so yeah just because the orientation of the plates the, the ends are not a problem and you know they're shorter as they're uh, much shorter as well so they have more strength so the main problem is with these uh, big broad sides so you really gotta somehow make sure that it's clamped so that it can't expand at all because you know if those plates separate then you're gonna the internal resistance of your cell is gonna go up and you're gonna have capacity problems and you're gonna have uh, discharge problems and you're just gonna have all sorts of problems so you really gotta uh, restrict uh, the expansion of these cells uh, one thing to note is that uh, cylindrical cells don't have this problem just because the the inherent uh, strength of the cylinder you know if you if you imagine these these uh, sheets being basically rolled up into a coil that's basically what a cylindrical cell is doing is it just rolls it up into a coil so if this sheet wanted to expand at all it pushes equally on all the sides of the uh, cylinder so it's, it's really difficult for it to expand at all because it's it's just uh, the cylinder is, just has that inherent strength with it so uh, that's one disadvantage of these uh, rectangular prismatic cells but uh, they're, they're quite a bit easier to pack into um, any kind of space and uh, just just the form factor is a lot easier to use and also the interconnecting of the of the cells is a lot easier so there's quite a few advantages as well uh, so yeah uh, unfortunately I was supposed to get um, interconnect bars for the cell modules so it, you basically have uh, bus bars going copper bus bars going from one cell to the next cell over and I was supposed to get those from the distributor as well but I didn't so I'm kind of in the process of talking to them and hopefully getting the bus bars or at least a refund for them so yeah worst comes to worst if I can't get those bus bars then I'm just gonna have to machine them myself which um, it's not a huge deal it's just a bit of a pain in the butt because you know you have to cut and drill a whole bunch of copper bars so uh, it seems like a pretty trivial process to cut and drill out uh, 25 copper bars but uh, it gets pretty uh, tedious after a while so it'd be nice to just uh, have those. Oh and uh, just one more thing I wanted to mention um, a lot of uh, BMS modules out there are made specifically to fit in between these terminals and kind of and kind of bolt uh, in between the terminals but uh, my design I actually design it just for wires to go to the terminals because that way I can use um, it's not designed for a specific cell or module so you can use it on any cell uh, or module and um, another advantage is that since these um, these remote boards have lights on them I really wanted to be able to see uh, what the lights were doing at all times so uh, what I'm looking to do is um, all these remote boards I want kind of mounted um, so you can see them visually on the side of the bike uh, maybe if you just even glance through the fairings on the side so that's why I didn't really want to mount them on top of the cells because if I, if I mount them on top of the cells there, sure it's out of the way but if I want to see what's going on I, I really can't because this might be buried in, somewhere in the middle of the bike these remotes um, they also don't really have any kind of uh, capacity limit of you know the lar the maximum size of cell you can put them on you can pretty much put them on any cell it's just that since they can only bypass about a half an amp of current it'll take a very long time to balance cells that are uh, very large even these uh, 70 amp hour cells will take quite a, a good deal of time to balance the first um, few cycles with these remotes but um, I kind of designed this thing in mind that um, the bouncing current isn't very high, yes, but uh, the heat generated from these resistors is very low and nothing on this board gets too hot, so they, this, uh, this remote board should last a very long time and, and the idea was to uh, make sure this thing was extremely reliable because I didn't want, I wanted to be able to install this and I didn't want it to fail ever, so I wanted it to be able to count on it all, at all times, so I could have put a much more powerful resistor pack in there or like a um, a wire wound power resistor, some big fat power resistor, but it would have taken up more space and it would have put off a lot more heat which you know messes with other components nearby on the board 
and um, yeah, just the odds of it failing are just uh, a lot higher. So I opted to um, put in the resistors there that um, discharge less current but uh, run at a lower temperature.